Hey everybody, it's Janice and I'm pretty stoked to be sharing some video with you here that I shot actually the other day um, while I was at work and I wanted to take a little time and let that experience sink in a little bit and yet I needed to get it up on the blog and out on Facebook and stuff because um, Monday, June 19th starts National Pollinator Week and so I had a chance to go out and see the bees and this video is going to be an opportunity for me to share with you some of the things I learned. So, hope you're ready. So, am I scared of bees? Why? Because when I would get stung, I'd swell up like a, I don't know, the Michelin Man, which I could probably be in this outfit right now. If somebody put like an air hose to me, it would be crazy how fast I would blow up. Invite you into an insect world. How many times have you been invited into an insect world? Twice none. I don't think I have, no. but I'm I'm seeing the bees already, Jerry. So so we got we got two different hives here. We got this really small. Okay. It's a nucleus colony. It's a small colony. We took some bees out of there. We started a new colony, and we're just kind of getting. bees in it. Uh, all the bees in there, <coughs> the workers, are females, kind of like our society. And all the workers are women. Yeah, that's true. One fertile female who's the mother of all those 20 or 30,000 in there called the queen. And then we have some males that are called drones. And so what we're going to do is open this beehive up because pollinator week is coming. And I want everybody to be amazed that this insect has a relationship with the environment. Flowers to help them reproduce and about a third of the food we eat because they pollinate those flowers to make fruits, nuts, and vegetables. You can see there are bees flying around. Normally not something I'm really comfortable with. I got on this great hood. I got zippers around me. I'm going to be safe, right, Jerry? Because they're kind of getting excited. I couldn't buy anything else extra for you, Janice. Everything is available in the gallery. All right. They're really close to me, dude. So this, I assume too much sometimes. This is called a smoker. Okay. And so what you do is you put, uh, I have pine straw in here, and you set it on fire. But you don't want a flame. You just want the smoke. Because in this hive here, it's all dark. Uh-huh. So if you're in the dark, the bees don't talk to each other. So how do you talk in the dark? And they do it by scents and odors. So a certain odor will mean something. Another odor will mean something else. And so we're going to open up their home. Okay. And we don't want them to think that we're going to hurt them. So we're going to pop a little smoke in there. What that smoke does is it breaks up that chemical communication, those odors. It overpowers the odors, and the bees can't talk to each other right now. And so there are a lot of bees around you, Jerry. Um, yeah. yeah, and so this is called an inner cover. We're going to take this off, and we're going to look in, because these first boxes are called honey supers. Yes. Yeah. This is where the bees are storing their honey that they will use for winter food. And I think I'll take one of these combs out because the bees are foraging. They're looking for flowers in about a two, two and a half mile radius of their home right here. So they're going into everybody's yard and looking for. Oh, dude, they like keep hitting this mask I'm wearing. Yeah. Good it's great they they're the hitting mask. the mask. Uh -huh. Good, good thing they're hitting the mask. All right, so you see those, these open cells here? You see that shiny stuff in there? Yeah. That's honey that the bees are ripening. And what ripening means is when they go out and collect nectar, this sugary liquid from a flower, it's very high in moisture. The bees evaporate that moisture so they can store it as honey. And when it's ready, when the, when the water level's ready, they'll put this wax capping over it. And I'm gonna stick my finger in here. Oh, dude, look at that! Uh oh, wait. And it's delicious. There's only one queen, one fertile female, and so, we want that queen to have a safe environment to raise her babies, lay eggs. She's going to lay about 1,500 eggs a day. That 
will develop into honeybees in about 21 days. He's here a little, a little more smoke, and then I'll take this queen excluder off. So that keeps the queen there. That keeps the queen inside. We hit the jackpot. Oh, anyway. wow. So this is a frame of bees. Remember I told you that the males are called drones? Yes. Okay, here's a drone. And drones Seriously. don't have a stinger. Oh, okay. Flying sperm. They don't do anything. They don't go to flowers. They don't visit anything. They just wait to mate with a queen if the, the colony needs one. So they're easy to pick up and handle, and they're kind of bigger, if you can see, bigger than the workers. So what, we're gonna take out another frame here because I think I see some cells where those drones, those males develop, because those cells are a little bit different. So, here's a frame. Oh, wow. Those, like, are coming up off of the frame. Yeah, so, yeah, because the drones are bigger. Remember we said the drones are bigger? So they need a larger cell to develop in. So that's what that is right there in comparison to, here's some, here's some right next to some worker cells for kind of comparison and contrast. And over here on this side, there's, you know, there's another drone. You can see why they need a bigger cell. And I'll blow on these bees because bees don't like people's breath. And you can maybe, can you see inside those cells? Because the I'm afraid there? others didn't see. Yeah, like I think of from the side, yeah. you can see how it rises up off of them. And none of those others did. Well, that's really weird. Oh, okay. Yeah, and that's just because they're bigger and they need a bigger house to live in, to develop in. Cool. Yep. And we probably don't want to take too much more apart because the queen is in there. And one of the things you, you want to do... You don't want to damage the queen. Damage her, be careful of her because if that happens, then of course the colony has a, a setback that either the beekeeper has to help them with or not. But if you can imagine, commercial beekeepers will take a hive like this, they can load 500 of them on a semi, drive them to where the grower is growing watermelons or peaches or apples because those growers will pay the beekeepers to place their hives there because these bees will go out and visit those flowers, pollinate them, and then this is where we get the bounty of fruits, nuts, and vegetables that we have in the grocery stores because this connection between honeybees and our food supply, and then think of all those flowers in the environment that honeybees visit, not just agriculture, but every flower is in your backyard or in that field or along the roadside that help those plants reproduce and help the environment. Um, how many other species of bees are there? In the, in the U.S. there's 4,000 different species of bees. 4,000 species of bees in the U.S.? Yes, and so the reason we use these bees is because Heck. We can get a big colony. When you're looking at mason bees or alfalfa leaf cutter bees or bumblebees, they all are either individuals or have a very small colony of maybe three or four hundred. As you can see, there are tens of thousands of bees in here. And so this is what makes it efficient and practical for us to use these bees to pollinate our agricultural crops. And because of all these bees, all their impact on the environment around us. Wow, Jerry. I had no idea of 4,000 kinds of bees. Are they all pollinators? Yeah, because, you know, and I hope nobody's under 12 on your Facebook, but plants can't get up and have sex. <gasps> I know. They have this relationship with an insect to do it for them, which I think is fantastic. Can you think two different species, separate different species that have come to this relationship, this partnership, where I'll give you some nectar and some pollen, but I want you to help me reproduce by moving that pollen to my other flower over there so that I can produce a seed so that I can live. It's amazing. Where else in the world do these things get along? We can't even get along. Let's, let's let the plants and the bees show us how to do it. Flowering plants in your yard and those bees visit those flowers, they are in no way trying to protect themselves or their home babies or anything else. They're not just looking for food. 
So you can sit out on your porch in your patio and watch these bees because they have no interest in you unless you do swat at them or interfere with what they're trying to do. So, so if you're them, aggressive to them, they... They, they want to protect themselves. Okay. Yeah. So they're, they're not going to be so much aggressive as they are defensive. Yeah. Because they don't want you to hurt them. Uh, and so they just want to teach you a lesson. All right. So I'm just going to lift it and put it right on the top of that. And it kind of stuck already. Oh, dude, I was getting it close to where it was supposed to be. And you really want to keep it lined up? Some of the bees get caught in the middle. That's kind of sad. I feel bad about that. So if you are a beekeeper, the largest beekeeper in the United States has 100,000 colonies. Can you imagine doing this on 100,000 colonies? This is one of the last hard, dirty jobs because you really can't automate it that much. This is all manual to a lot of extent. Oh man, they really are investigating me now. Yeah. in my face. Oh, dude, you are so not bringing these to my house. Like nothing ever happened. Look at that. No steam. Where do you pick it here? Like this part? No, no, on the bell, on the bellows. Put your hand over the top. There you go. I got a stylus oh, in my hand. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like this? Yep. Perfect. Ah, look at that. Thanks a lot. You guys all have a good pollinator week, and I hope you continue to learn about bees just like I have. out my other content here, subscribe, and catch me at JP Loves Cotton all over social media and the web.